Jared Labgood agents. We've got the guys from Street Text on with us today. Thanks for being on, guys. And we're going to be talking about uncovering the story of every seller. Talking about online seller leads. They know all about this because their seller leads kill it. And of course, I've got Nick with me, Dan, and I think we've got alternate names, guys. We've got uh, <laughs> Batman, Spider-Man, and then Marcus, you're Captain America, and Logan, you're Wolverine, right? That's true. No, I'm Buzz, Buzz, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm, Buzz, I'm Buzz Lightyear. You're Buzz Lightyear. Hey, and I just want to make one disclaimer. Anyone watching this this webinar, if you don't want more seller leads, then stop watching right now. <laughs> just stop it. You know what? The, no way. The funny thing is, everybody that does the buyer leads with us too doesn't realize that our funnels are they call, we call it the buyer to, to seller funnel because we attract sellers out of the buyer funnel as well. So, dude, that's, that's the best way to do it. Like, I would say thirty percent of our leads that come from Facebook have a house to sell. Mm -hmm. I, I see that a lot. I mean, if you look at it and you say, hey, if I could get you top dollar for your home, would you sell? A lot of people will say, well, okay, maybe. But if I can say, what are you missing in your property? What, you know, it, it, back to, you know, the, the story you have to tell, what is it that you don't currently have that you want? If I can excite somebody on that side, I use a personal story. I mean, my home, do I want to sell it? No. But do I want a pool? Yes, I do. So if somebody says you want to sell your home, no. But if they say, hey, would you like to start seeing a list of homes in your area around your price point with a pool? Okay, well, now I'm intrigued. Right now, if I start seeing what I actually want, I may, you know, backtrack a little bit, put my home on the market and, and see where it goes. But it, it starts with understanding and uncovering what people's stories are. That's actually a really good, that's actually a really good, uh, really good point. Because I think very few people actually want to sell their house, right? But because they probably, but they want something else that their house doesn't have. That makes a lot of sense. Well, you're, you're, you're approaching the whole thing from the very beginning with a different mindset. And I think that's what it takes for, for agents to be able to be more successful with these leads. Instead of them going in and finding out, well, when do you need to sell? Well, why, why, why can't you sell now? Tell me. You're coming at it with, well, let, let me actually help them by finding out where they're at. You know, what's their story so that I'm able to help them? Yeah, well, and just, uh, we'll uncover it a little bit more, more in depth later, but I mean, even we see with our Julie automation, with the text messages and stuff like that, where, where people will oftentimes will they'll say, uh, actually, I'm not ready for that yet. I'm not ready to sell my home. And the agent will reply back something like, not a problem. Let me know when you're ready. Well, no, the right question is, why aren't you ready? You know, what is it that I can help you accomplish? And a lot of times it's, well, we need to buy a home first. Great. Tell you what, let's start there. I'm going to start with the home value process. I'm going to help you set a budget. Then let's start searching. Right, but it always starts at, at step one. All right, cool, cool. Is that Logan in the picture? Is that him in the middle? <laughs> I, I'm probably one of those somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually. That's actually I, also, I see Steven too. Where are you, Marcus? It's the, <laughs> I'm the right. I'm the right hand side, and I'm. Ah, okay. It's the that's, moment after a long night. We've all partied hard together, and, and he, we're just. He's the guy with the cute vest on there. We decided yeah. we want to watch the Sunny Rouse. <laughs> Street Tech's crew. Is that, is that the part of the movie where you guys are like, you know what? We'll always have each other. Yeah, that's the, the credits right there. That's oh, it. The, it's the sequel to The, the Hangover. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, I mean, I think we're all into this idea. And, and Tristan, yeah. I sent you that video to preface this before that really shows you that 96% of those people on Facebook today who click on the ad, buyer or seller focused, aren't ready to buy or sell today. So the idea really comes down to how do you, do you get them to know you like you and trust you, right? And it starts with, uh, you know, going back to the, the slide of, of, you know, the relational side of this. It's, it's all built on relationship. And we're all trying to, to filter through BS. We're being solicited hundreds if not thousand times every single day so you have to look at that moment you connect with that person it's almost the most important impression you're going to give them so we're going to talk about like how do you do that um but we start here i mean we're all you know logan you can kind of go over this does it sound familiar right i could all use a, a few more clients right <laughs> yeah i could use a more innovative way to generate leads and get the word out i could use sure. a system that gives me leads consistently like yeah of course but the, bi the biggest obstacle in all of that is, is not so much generating leads because we've proven with our system at Street Tech that we can produce incredible lead flow. I mean, 
one of our funnels is it produced close to 70% of click to submission, right? So if you think of that, if you're tapping into around a dollar cost per click, well, what does that translate to lead? That's a lot of leads. That's a ton of leads, man. Yeah. I mean, we've seen it. We, we have guys that, um, will come into a trial of ours and let an ad run. And they're like, Oh, let's just run $15 a day ad. And you know, come down seven days later and they've produced 250 leads. Okay. So it's not a matter of ever you not able to tap into Facebook, at least the, with the, the ads and funnels we run to generate leads. It's a matter of what is what, yeah, you can do at least, but what are you going to do to actually take that lead into number one, a relationship and how do you start that conversation with them? So they see that you're being authentic and genuine. Yeah. And that's the most important thing here. I mean, it, there's no myth that leads are there to be had on Facebook. You can find leads um, ridiculously cost effectively. Now it, it, it's, it's not a problem generating leads whatsoever. Uh, you know, leads are, leads are there to be had on Facebook. Now it's, it's how do you differentiate yourself? How do you stand apart from other people? Because it's no, no secret. Other people are also trying to generate those same leads on Facebook, right? So you need, in my opinion, it's less about becoming um, different in, in your ads so much as it is differentiating yourself on the follow-up, right? Yeah. I mean, you need to have something that sets you apart. And we always talk on, on, you know, video content and everything like that. And if people want to start running videos on, on Facebook ads, and I'm, I'm sure that that can work no problem, but it's, it's not really where the, um, the, the difference is in my opinion, once again, it's all in that follow up, and you need to have that, that quick and, and easy way to get yourself in front of these people in a personal fashion as soon as possible. Because if your first follow up texts, emails, whatever they are, or just business, 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 what's different from when, what they're getting from other agents. You know, you make a good point. I just want to interject for a sec mm -hmm. because so many people, for some reason, you know, on Facebook, on, on lab good agents, we hear a lot of agents saying, Oh, I never buy online leads. I'm a relationship. I'm a relationship builder. Right. And it's like, Dude, That's what it is. Over. We're ready. Look, it, Facebook's the relationship platform. Yeah. Like that makes no sense to me. We're building relationships all day long on Facebook with people we don't know. Some of them are in different countries. So if you look at Facebook as just a way to generate leads, then you're completely missing the mark. And I think that's why so many agents are failing when they are generating leads through Facebook because they're not treating them like the relation like relationships because that's what they are on that platform. Well, hundred percent. I mean, consider the and we were not going to name any names here, but consider some of the other platforms that that hand deliver finished leads, so to speak. Right? What happens? You get that lead, you call that lead, you text them. Fair enough number pops up on their call display. Who are you? Right. You're a number. You're, 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 you're not anybody yet in the, in, in that, that respect. But when they come through your Facebook ads and you're able to go back, backtrack, find them on Facebook. I mean, they, they came through your Facebook ad. That's the first place you want to go. Find them on Facebook, create that relationship, right? Because now when somebody's trying to add me as a friend and send me a message on Facebook, I can do a little bit of backtracking myself. Who are they? What are they all about? What's the story behind this agent who's sending me information as opposed to a phone number who I'm probably screening, let's be honest, right? So you're, you're, telling, you're telling me that you, we need to become mini stalkers. Is that what you're telling me? See, I think it's, it's, it's funny that you say that. I know you're joking, but it, it's funny that if it's set up the, the right way, we get that all the time. And if it's set up the right way, the sequence is perfect because I think that if, if it's out of the blue, sometimes it's a little off-putting. But if you have something, let's say, like a bomb bomb video, as your first autoresponder in your email that prefaces the fact that you're going to find them on Facebook. No longer is it who is this Logan guy or Wolverine in this case, who's trying to stalk me on Facebook. It's like, Oh yeah, Logan told me that this was going to happen. Right. Cause I can have a pre-recorded video that's automatically sent to these leads. As soon as they come through my funnel that says, Hey, my name's Logan. Here's what's going on. Right. You know, I've received your Facebook valuation request. I'm on it. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to be finding you on Facebook or I'm going to be sending you a friend request. Here's my Facebook profile below as well. Can't wait to meet you, right? So then I'm hoping that they find me, but I have an open, open-ended invitation in the sense that I've opened up myself to go and find them. Exactly. And I'm That's take, actually good, I'm, guys. I like that. I'm going to take it a step further, Tristan. It's the idea of, of this. If, if you're being authentic, then it doesn't matter what information you have in hand. Let's say you, all you have is an address to go off of, okay? Well, what we teach as literally leveraging your own personal Facebook as a CRM, yeah. you profile that person. Number one, I mean, obviously, if you have their name and phone number and email and address, you're, you're flying. You have all the information you need to start the conversation. 
But with the partial leads, with the address only, I've always had these people that say, you know what, these mean nothing to me. I'm like, really? Because behind every single one of those addresses is a homeowner. And behind all those addresses, you can find tax records, pull up that homeowner's name. You could actually go into the search bar of Facebook. You can then take it to the people search, go to that farming area where you have found that lead. Let's say it's in Los Gatos, California, and you type in Marcus Willard, Los Gatos, you have that Facebook profile right in front of you. Now, what are you going to do? At that moment, this is what's going to make you an influencer and someone authentic or not. When you actually friend request that person, you drop them into a list. Everybody know about friends lists? Because if you don't, this is the next big thing on Facebook. Yeah, we do. But explain it in detail so people understand how powerful it is. Okay. So when you go and friend request somebody, we can even share an example. Let's see if I go into um, my personal Facebook, for example. Everyone see my Facebook? Yes. Okay. So if I'm searching for anybody for them, I mean, Logan, should I just use you? Search for me. Okay. Let's say, let's say we, I've, I have a, a, a tax record in front of me and I pull up, I pull up Logan Press as the homeowner. Okay. Now, when I go to pull in Logan Press, the first all search I have is everybody who's named Logan Press or anything to do with Logan Press all over Facebook. Right. But what mm -hmm. people don't know is that at the moment that I go to people, right, there's a bunch of local press out there. And then that, then that moment I go a little step further and I choose the actual city that I'm targeting in. And, you know, in this case, if I went to Kelowna, British Columbia, there's Logan. Okay. And we know that, I mean, we hear that all the time. People get uh, an address only submission, right? Well, I have, these are, these are garbage. They're junk. They're, they're, they're not interested and I don't have any way of contacting them. Well, think of it as, as just curious, right? It's, I always use the analogy of you just walked onto a car lot with a pocket full of cash. You know, the, the salesperson comes up to you and says, okay, well, are you ready to buy this vehicle today? Yes. Yeah. I have $80,000. This is the vehicle I want. What's the best deal I can get on it? Is that, that's absolutely not the way that conversation starts. It's no, I'm just curious. I'm looking around. And I feel that people who put in an address only on some of these submission forms or people who put just curious or tell you initially they're just curious, it's a defense mechanism because they're used to the over-aggressive agent hearing that they're more than just interested or just curious and there's blood in the water, right? All of a sudden people are, you know, they're, they're, they're getting their phone blown up at 7.30 at night when they sit down for dinner, their email's full of just crap. They're, people are sick of that. So it, it's things like this that really set it apart. You take the address only, do exactly like Marcus showed there, you find the individual and then take it a step further there, Marcus. Well, I mean, at that moment, so we're friends right now, but let's just say I unfriend him for this specific purpose. Mm. Uh, you Don't worry, I'm going to send you another friend request. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this is all I mean, after, so fast. after all, I mean, look at us. We're two pieces of pot, buddy. <laughs> um, so now, as soon as I click on add friend, because here's the model I'm trying to teach. <clears throat> no longer is your personal Facebook one where it's just reserved for your friends and family and high school buddies, okay? As somebody who's in sales as somebody who's in real estate in a relationship-based business you are now an influencer and your opportunity is as big as you want to create that influence in so as soon as i click add friend what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to allow my my mouse to scroll over the friend request sent and i'm going to add into a list now that list is automatically auto populating for me based on what it sees in the settings section but the key is you can add as many lists as you want and cross them into multiple lists. So, you know, when I'm going here and here and here and here, I can put them and drop them into multiple lists. So the idea becomes endless with what you can do in terms of, hey, this guy's an address only. This guy's also a street text lead. This guy's also a seller lead. This is also somebody I dropped into the, the you know, sent friend request to folder. So I can monitor that. So when I go back, I'm also going to obviously send them a message as well because I want to track my history of conversation with them. But if I do this in parallel with my autoresponders that are going out from email and SMS, I got myself an incredible model that is only working on developing relationship. And so if you, your automations are reflecting that, your bomb bomb videos are reflecting that. So when I go in, he's almost expecting this message is going to come in his way. But the most important piece of this, and I think the, almost the most overlooked, is when you log into your personal Facebook every single day, you're no longer seeing it as just a place to go scroll down a news feed. You're going to go straight into the explore section to your friends list section. And now you're looking at it as your next CRM. Facebook is now your CRM. 
You know those those little things that get sent around on Facebook all the time that something like, um, hey, if you want to start seeing people outside your audience, you know, copy and paste this and Facebook will find new people, blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's a, it's a answer to the fact that every time you go to your homepage on Facebook, you see from the same people each and every single day. I see things from my friends, my family, the people I'm already closely connected with. And for the, for, for what Facebook is supposed to be used for, you know, the community aspect of it, that's great. But for the fact that we're trying to make this more of a business tool, you do need to kind of hack the algorithm hack the algorithm a little bit. So what is happening here is when he clicks on friends lists, he clicks on that list. Now instead of seeing from those same people all the time, he's seeing from those people he's put into this list. Meaning that I could say something like Los Gatos home home sellers, right? Or or street tech sellers, whatever you want to create. Then you're creating this list. You log in there maybe once a week. You're seeing the news updates from those people specifically. And then obviously what you do is you find the ones that are appropriate and you simply like them. Right. A couple things happen. That individual now gets a dopamine dump of, oh, somebody's like my thing. They also get reminded of us. Oh, Marcus, that street text guy or, or whoever my, my potential realtor, whatever it is, top of mind, always important. But way more important than any of that, Facebook now sees us as more connected. Because behind the scenes, you're hacking the algorithm. You're telling Facebook, hey, me and Eric Lowry or whoever it may be are now more connected. So when I'm starting to post things from my own page, the likelihood of them being tagged or, or seeing it is much greater because Facebook, once again, behind the scenes is seeing the connection. And look at this, guys. The beauty behind this too is it humanizes the process. What you don't know about this list is that not every single one of these people are my friend. Okay? So I drop them into that list knowing that a large percentage of them won't accept my friend request, but now I, I have this ability to always revisit every single one of those lists to see if we're connected. So if I go to Felicity, we are friends, but a number of those, they haven't accepted my friend's request list. So I always go back to this list and I find that when they accept your friend request, they start filtering into these newsfeed a lot more based on the list you've created. If they're not, it could just mean they haven't accepted yet, just like this guy right here, friend request sent. Okay, so what do I do? Every once in a while, I press cancel request. And what am I gonna do again? Guess what? Request to be friends. Request to be friends. <laughs> like you've done this before, Tristan. So, all so, the time. <laughs> yeah, Tristan, Tristan does that to me all the time because I haven't accepted it. I'm like, damn it, Nick. Well, and the other, the other thing that, that we, we didn't quite touch on there that and, I think is incredibly he, and important. Pokes, and then he pokes me on Facebook. He's the only one that uses, <laughs> uses I don't even know that's still a feature. That's creepy. But, <laughs> <laughs> but think of it this way. Now that you've, you've curated this list of potential sellers within a particular area, why not record a video and do a monthly market update, right? So if you're farming one particular development, a neighborhood, a county, whatever it is, once a month, you just say, hey, here's what's going on in the such and such area. Over the last 30 days, there have been X amount of new listings sold, days on market, median price, whatever it is, whatever you want to highlight for that market, you're then expected, people are expecting to see from you once a month. Once again, you're top of mind. People who came in initially and let's say they're, let's say they're three to six months away from actually selling their home. Nothing you can offer them today is really going to get them across the line. You need to get them when the iron's hot. You need to strike at the right time, right? So in three months, if they've seen three of your videos, now you're the area expert. When you come back through and that time is right, why wouldn't you get that call? There's right? so, yeah, there's so much power behind it. I mean, look at the fact that with Tony, he hasn't said my friend request yet, right? But look, I sent him a message. I sent him a video message because here's another key. Send video messages. It's free on Facebook Messenger. Don't be the guy that just sends a, hey, Tony, you know, just looking to see if you got the home value that I sent you. You know, that's, that's not going to be received well whatsoever. But if you send a video introducing yourself that cannot get lost in translation, they'll automatically see if you're being authentic and genuine or not. And they're going to see you as somebody they like. And I promise you that most of them have never seen something like this before. Okay. But also the reason why you send them a friend request is because if you don't, it's just going to get lost in the message request folder of Facebook. Make sense. When you go to met messages on Facebook, you have message requests and you have recent. So if, if you are somebody who is not friends yet, it sits in your message request folder. Does that make sense? Yeah, hundred percent. Okay. So, so when I'm now in my friends list, what, what Logan was just alluding to is now like I can go into any one of my, any one of these, you know, here's Logan's clients folder and <laughs> he's I always can, marketing like, to that one. You guys not happy with <laughs> Logan? 
Come on over. <laughs> Fair game. Yeah. I mean, and, and I think the beauty of it though is that you're now you're not bothering your your friends and your family with the the posts that are intended for your potential clients. You're not bothering existing clients with the things that you want to send to potential clients, and you're also not sending each other realtors, right? So if you're running a contest or something like that, you don't want to give all your best ideas away for free, right? So you're you're managing this list automatically or manually, I guess I should say. You're doing it yourself. Exactly. And guys, one of the things we teach a lot about all these autoresponders, but one of the things that um, I want to make sure you guys are aware of, let me just present this again, is when you are sending an address only an introduction, just be real, be genuine and say, hey, you know, I received your address on Facebook looking for a home value request. You, know, you probably thought this was some sort of automated CMA, so I apologize if it didn't reach you the right way. But I wanted to let you know I'm just trying to connect with you. Sometimes there's an actual buyer interested in your property. Sometimes it's actually someone renting the home. But let me know if this is something that you'd be interested in, right? So at the end of the day, if you're coming across as authentic, then think about all the possibilities. And by the way, oh, by the way, you know, I'm going to actually send something in the mail as well. It's just so you get a chance to get what you requested, right? So they're actually, if they ever find that in the future, they'll already connect to what you sent in the mail. Okay? So hmm. I'm loving this. Keep on going. All right. All right. So now, I mean, it's all about, so that's that side. Now, now in terms of tapping into amazing lead flow, we got you on that one. Okay. We, you know, and Logan's going to get into how do you run micro and macro tests to get more from Facebook. Um, and so we're, you know, basically we're going to teach you how to introduce yourself to every lead and cover your seller's story to get more appointments. So why don't you just describe this slide real quick, Logan? Who drew uh, the footballs? Uh, I think John uh, was, was responsible for John, you failed, John. You failed. <laughs> <laughs> the trajectory is a little off, but I think it highlights the, uh, the importance. And, I, I, you know, these, these slides, for, for me, I love sports analogies. It just makes sense to me. So I apologize if we don't have any sports fans here that, that, that get uh, the, the idea. But realistically, if you look at the end zone there, where, where do all agents want to stand? They want to stand where the finished leads are. But what happens is, is you're fighting over one ball. Right. So you're, you're all standing there. You're paying top dollar to be standing in the end zone that that Hail Mary comes. Somebody's going to catch it. Right. I mean, it's a finished lead. Somebody's going to catch that and, and, and spike it. But who's going to get it? You're all paying the same amount to get there. What happens traditionally is that it, it gets to that first person and, and you have, you know, let's say five minutes. If you don't speed the lead, if you don't get there immediately, somebody else is also getting that lead and they have an assistant. They have a better follow up strategy than you. And you're, you're all calling that same person. So you pay way more money, in my opinion, for a lower conversion percent or higher conversion percentage potentially, but fewer leads for more money. Whereas you can stand on, say, the 50-yard line and intercept passes all day long. That's kind of the idea here is that I would rather stand in front of everybody. I pay considerably less money to stand halfway down the field, but then I'm catching them and I'm running them myself. So for me, the idea is it's considerably more scalable. Because if you're standing there and just paying top dollar for, for those leads, uh, I, once again, I feel the fact that you're fighting everybody for them. You're, you're, it's much more difficult to scale an appropriate strategy, right? And then what happens is what happens if that lead source dries up? Your, your whole business is reliant on something else. Whereas with Facebook leads, you can use a company like ours to build your own ads, build your own strategies. Yeah. Scale. So what happens if they take over the industry and start selling your homes? Very true. We weren't even going to touch on that, but I mean, 100%. I mean, you think of it that that's exactly what's starting to happen with, with these big companies. They're figuring out how they can better leverage the product for themselves, right? So you need to be ready to do things for yourself. And that's kind of where, where I, I feel street text comes in, but just Facebook in general, it, it's, yeah. it's about standing in the right place, having the right follow-up and, and take these leads. Cause you know, the, the Zillow's, the bold leads, they all have a, a strategy that works to get people from here to there. Right, you're you're buying them here at top dollar, whereas you should be starting here, working them yourselves through your own automations, your own processes. Get your own personality in front of them first, as opposed to once again, you're just a number who's calling on the phone and hoping to build a relationship late in the game. Start that early. You have three to six months to build a relationship, develop rapport, so that when they pull the trigger, you're not just some agent; you're their friend. Right? I think so that's I think <clears throat> I think the issue that that most agents have when it comes to Facebook. You know, a lot of the stuff, uh, a lot of stuff that Tristan and I hear is, oh, I've been generating leads on Facebook for a week and nothing's nothing converted. Happened. Yeah. Right. And it's like, this is, this is your opportunity to become someone that they trust. It's your opportunity to become their trusted advisor. You're generating leads on the portals. 
you know, for like four or 500, sometimes a thousand dollars or more a lead, you're, you're just a door opener. They don't need you for anything else. Right. <clears throat> but when you're educating someone from the very, very, very top of the funnel, you're then building that trust with them and forming that relationship. And that's what I love so much. So <clears throat> for us, you know, it can take three, four months to, uh, to convert um, a, Facebook, a Facebook opportunity. But the cool thing about it is every three or four months, that funnel fills back up again because we're generating so many, you know? So it keeps yeah, your I mean, funnel. We're generating on, on average, I think, you know, $2.50 leads, right? So, I mean, and once again, are 100% of those going to convert? Absolutely not. But that's the idea is, is, is I think people get so tied down with the fact that given the offer is, do you want to know what your home is worth typically? People just assume they have to give everybody a CMA, right? So, I mean, you're talking 15, 20 minutes to pull comps and to do a good job. And what happens when you, when you give them that CMA? Are those numbers accurate? I can't imagine that they are, right? Because until you've seen that property, you're going off past sales, you're going off, off of neighborhood stats, you're going off a lot of things and you can get close. You know, I, I used to be pretty, pretty darn good at, at coming up with accurate-ish numbers on my CMA, but still 15 minutes to send inaccurate information, that's not for me. So for me, it's, it's defining your process. It's defining, giving them more of a reason to speak to you. And once they're ready to speak to you, I don't mind, even if they're not ready to sell for three to six months, if I can get in the door and give them an actual valuation of market value, I've gotten what I want, which is that relationship. I've built rapport. They trust me now. And then, when they're ready to sell, I guarantee I'm getting that call. Let's, let's, let's flip this on, on its head for a second too and, and discover each home like we talked about as a story. Because every single one of those homes has a story behind why they first bought that home, why they purchased that home, what they fell in love with about that home. And so I think it's key to look at that person and that family as an individual and go back and take them to that emotional decision they made when they bought that home, what drew them into that property? Cause that's the same way you're going to market that home. You know, think about that as a story in the sense, Hey, you know, at that time in my life, I just had a newborn. Um, I had a two year old. I was looking at this home and I was looking at the neighborhood, the, the school, the, the preschool and elementary school was just a couple blocks away. We were looking at this kitchen and we were going to talk about remodeling it. We wanted to think about our family and flying them in from California. Like if you start touching at the heartstrings, they're going to see you as somebody authentic and genuine, especially from the beginning. That is, that's your foot, foot into the door. That's where they say, you know what? I like this person. He's not just trying to tell me what he could sell my home for. He's trying to actually ask me what I love most about my home. And if there's one thing about it that I changed, what would it be? Which leads you to the buying decision. Hey, you know, we love this home, but we've always wanted to pull. The boys are old enough now. So we're actually just been thinking about it, but we haven't found the right home yet to move them into wow, you just got a seller and a buyer in the same breath, right? So think about it that way. When you, when you, it's the art of uncovering, and you can only do that through an authentic opportunity. And where's the authentic opportunities come from? And unless you're literally willing to get in front of them at home, at their door, then embrace technology. Embrace bomb bomb video. Embrace Facebook Messenger. Embrace that everything's moving in that scalable model. It's, it's scaling yourself with an authentic message. And we're going to get into a few of the kind of uh, tips, tricks, secrets, if you will, of, of how we do a lot of our targeting and, and what works for us. But I kind of wanted to double down on that a little bit and understanding that every person is an individual. And when you stop looking at these transactions as transactions and exactly like Marcus is saying, uncover what the story is that brought them to where they are, you'll learn so much about people and, and how to converse with them. And I think those two simple questions for me that the, the, the two most important questions that I ever asked a potential seller was exactly that. It was, what's your favorite memory in this home, right? What's the, what's your the top memory? What's the best thing about this property? And then also the next one is the, the real meat and potatoes is if you could change anything, what would it be? Because that first question gives me their why, you know, what's your favorite memory? Well, I raised my whole family here. We, you know, I, I moved here with, with my wife, you know, we, whatever it may be, had our first kid, then we raised our family. Now I know that they're emotionally tied to that aspect. There's a good opportunity that they're, that's the kind of people that I'm going to try to find for this home. It's a first time buyer's type home, right? And I, I'm connecting that emotion. It's not just, hey, would you want top dollar for this property, right? It's, I'm going to find you the right people for this home. A lot of people will take that. And I mean, we have an example here. Uh, one of the people that, that works here um, had multiple offers on his property that he sold recently. And he didn't even take the one that was for top dollar. 
Sounds crazy to me. I would take top dollar, just who I am. But I'm just saying <laughs> for, for him. <laughs> but I mean, it, it's, it's all about connecting who you are personally. I mean, it's the area where, where he is in his life. He wanted somebody who's going to take care of the lawn the same way he did every day. He wants somebody who's take care of that garden. He's paid, uh, you know, spent so much time building up this property to where it is now. He doesn't want somebody to come in and, and not look after it the same way. So that was the key. That's what he, wants he was a, looking for. He wants a family. For. Right, he wants somebody and, that will come in and will embrace the work and the hard work he's put into it, and take advantage of what he did for his children and the neighborhood. So once again, if the agent had just started with, um, "I'm a great agent. If I don't sell your home in, in 90 days, I'll buy it cash," well, that would have missed the mark with him. That's not what he's looking for. He wanted, "Tell me your story. Tell me your home story, and let's continue that story." And it sounds cheesy to a point, but it works phenomenally well because once you can connect with these people beyond the transaction you have a customer for life and the, the referral business and the repeats that come from that type of connection, it, it far surmounts any amount of, of advertising you can do. Word of mouth, social proof is everything and you have to build that. So, so the key then obviously is becoming an influencer of every, every single lead you generate. Now we're going to, we have lots of training and courses. We have masterminds every Wednesday, every single day is an opportunity to actually go through and, and work with Logan and I and our community. We have lots of Zoom video calls that we do, but we're going to get into an, another element here. This is for people that are like, okay, I can do that. I love the influencer style. I'm willing to be trained in that and coached, but show me how to tap into Facebook. Show me how to get great lead volume, predictable lead volume. Um, sh show us an example of what a typical seller ad would be. And so we're going we're gonna to highlight that real quick. Now, this, this graphic here is just kind of give you the idea of what does it mean by macro versus micro? Why don't you quickly highlight that, Logan, based on the macro micro model? Yeah, so the idea with macro micro, obviously, micro being small and, and refined, macro being large and broad, right? And it used to be, I would say, just over a year ago before the latest algorithm shift, micro was far and away the only way to do things. You had to be hyper local, hyper targeted, neighborhood specific, zip code specific. Um, that shifted considerably. And while that still works, we're finding the ability to combine your favorite areas or one banner works even better. So for instance, let's say that you are wanting to advertise a particular county um, or, or, or an area, a grouping of cities, let's say uh, the Silicon Valley, for instance. Um, you can now reference the Silicon Valley in your ad copy and then target the individual cities that fall under that banner as one whole ad. And it, once again, it used to be the preferred target range was somewhere between 15 to, I'd say, 65,000 total population. That seemed to be the best area. We're finding now the ability to combine multiple areas and get into you know, upwards of a million population, uh, or, or at least viewable on Facebook, works phenomenally well. So once again, micro will be the uh, one area. So uh, if, you're, if you're doing, you know, San Jose, Palo Alto, you're going to want to create separate ads for all those areas. But then you reference Silicon Valley and we'd use an ad that says something like someone wanted to buy your Silicon Valley home. And I would target all of the cities individually within that one banner ad. What then happens is not only is your longevity much greater because you, the amount of people moving in and circulating through that area, you're never going to have to turn that ad off. Essentially, it should go forever, but you're also highlighting individual pockets that you should build micros for, which could hit really well as well. Do you guys, so if you're running, do you guys have any examples of those ads so we can see a couple of them? Sure, sure. Marcus, are you able to go over to our, our funnel? So we'll, we'll show you the, um, the funnel builder page and we have a, a ton of templates that are, that are already ready to go and uh, many more getting added all the time. And that's the idea is from our system, we like to be able to show the fact that you can build an ad with all the proper targeting connected to a landing page, drip campaigns, both email, text message, everything like that. And it doesn't take more than 15 seconds. So anybody who's ever built an ad on Facebook, you know that even once you're perfectly familiar with the ads manager and how often it changes and everything like that, but it's a little bit of a, a step to navigate. Actually, Marcus, go to the, our funnels page for a sec. Yeah, you betcha. I'll go into, let's see, I'll just go to Nick's account. Let me just move you guys over. And so you can go in here and what we do is we, we try to compile all the big data so that it's not you trying to go this alone. You're able to come in and say, okay, with everybody currently using the street text platform, which ad is the best one? Which template should I start with? 
right? So you can log into your system here and you'll be able to see all the available templates and then calculate based on, we, I think the most important was click to contact ratio, right? Because with a sponsored ad, you pay per click, not per view. So I don't care how many people see it, but every time somebody clicks on my ad, I've paid for that click. So I wanna make sure the likelihood of me getting some form of information is much greater. So if you look through here, you can see a lot of them are you know, roughly 30% click to contact ratio, which I would say is right on par with the industry average. I think that that's a good number, but you can see that the most commonly selected funnel type that we have is this one here, the seller's property valuation conversion with over a quarter million clicks in the last year, 66.8% of those clicks leaving contact information leaving some way for us to, to, to find them. Right. And that's important because if that number was say, you know, 10% or 2%, actually, yeah, the industry average, I believe is, is yeah, John's just telling me now is closer to 2%. I say 30% because that's the, that's the average across our platform, I guess. But, you know, being the percentage with which 66.8% are leaving some form of information, those clicks are now incredibly more valuable. You're not paying for nothing. You're paying for an opportunity to meet people. Um, and we won't go through the whole setup process here, but all you have to do is click the little select button there. Uh, you type in the area that you're interested in, uh, add, a, add an image, hit, hit launch. Like I said, 15 seconds and everything, all the heavy lifting is done for you, which is why we, we recommend everybody at least come and try the street text trial. We offer a seven day trial to test your area and make sure that it's a fit for you long-term before you've committed to anything with us. Look at this. I mean, this guy's, this is how easy to launch and deploy an ad. You click on Silicon Valley, you type it up there. That's what you're going to do. Then you type in Silicon Valley and now you have three images that you can choose from, you know, the terrain pulls in the mountainous hilly areas. There's a satellite image and then there's a map image. And I'm telling you guys, all three of these can hit. We've seen it all over the place. So you start zooming in particularly to the communities that you want to market in. And let's say I wanted to focus on this entire area of the Silicon Valley. Most, you know, maybe I'm, I'm like, you know, I, I want to do San Jose, Santa Clara, Campbell, Los Gatos, um, and you know, Montesoreno. I click next. I don't have to hit on the, hit the entire County. I could drop a pin in Los Gatos and do a 15 mile radius. I can target every single location that I, I want. Maybe I want just Los Gatos. Um, I want San Jose and you know, let's say Campbell. Okay. Now, now I've got myself a macro ad built. I click next and I deploy, bam, adds out. I mean, that's how easy it is because at the end of the day, I, I show people this because when we go out there and I'm gonna share an example here, I wanna launch a half a dozen ads overnight at that $9 a day. The $9 a day is just a benchmark. We've benchmarked it over 50,000 ads. We have a good idea of what it's gonna do. You don't have to stay there. You can scale it up, you can scale it down. But when I do that, look what I'm doing. All of a sudden I can go and test Walnut Creek Okay, here's Walnut Creek. Spent 14 bucks, generated nine leads at $1.60 a lead. Here's San Francisco, 59 cents a click. Only spent 14 bucks to generate 17 leads. This is all being done in a period of 24 hours. Sacramento, same type of thing. 13 leads. Fair Oaks. Now, Fair Oaks is an example of, hey, it didn't work. I spent 14 bucks. I really wanted to be in that area, but it wasn't working for me. It doesn't mean it's not going to work. It just means this particular ad didn't work, and I should go out there and test it a, a number of different ways. Maybe I should try it by zip code targeting. Maybe I should try it by dropping a pin. Maybe I should try it with a different image because ultimately it's up to the first few hundred people. You don't have to. That's why I want people split testing more with these funnels because you have to go out there with the hunter persona. Once you start looking at it as I'm hunting for Facebook algorithm, okay, perfect. Now I can give you great lead flow and you're spending a buck 50 a lead. Good for you. What are you going to do on the opposite end of that lead to give that ex an authentic experience on the other end to start the communication? Because I can generate leads with you all day, but if you can't follow up with them in a way that feels real and genuine, it's not going to matter anyways. This is top of funnel marketing. This is not Zillow and Trulia and Realtor. Right? That's true. Well, and the idea here is, is that split testing becomes so incredibly important and it has to be done properly though. And a lot of people will assume that the right way to run a split test is run, run an ad for let's say seven days, pause it, run another ad, pause it, and then keep testing and testing and testing. And in my opinion, that's the worst way to do it because you need to use more of the, the scientific method where you have a control. 
The control needs to be similar, of course, be, uh, amongst your ads. So let's say, for instance, if you're testing area first, you're testing a bunch of micro ads, right? You're going to want to select a similar image type, whether it's the satellite image, whether it's the sat, uh, you know, terrain image, whatever it may be, or if you're using uh, images of houses, whatever you're using, make sure that they're similar and you're testing area because you want to do over the same time with the same budget, the same imagery because you're testing area. Once you've decided on the area that you want, then maybe you start testing different ad copy, you start testing different imagery um, things like that but if you test one one week and one the other week there's no way of knowing what other mm -hmm. factors may have once again factored in so it's scientific method keep controls right so By i would way, um, oh sorry you guys mentioned you know that you know we were talking before about how with these facebook leads you know they're top of funnel and so what a lot of people are 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 saying is that, you know, while yes, it is very easy to generate a lead, anyone can generate a lead, right? I can go outside and generate a lead. But the thing is, it's about the follow-up process. And the follow-up process with Facebook is so much more complex than the follow-up process with Realtor.com or Zillow. And so people have to remember, if you don't have those processes in place, if you're not calling, if you don't have the automation, you know, it's not, nothing's a silver bullet, but you, you have to have that in place uh, you have to block out the time to be diligent about continuously reaching out to people. And that's what, with Facebook specifically, people tend to forget. That's the most important and crucial part. Dude, you can yeah, I mean, given the fact that that's what we do is, is Facebook social media generated leads, that's the follow-up strategy that we've built behind the system that we offer as well is that there's two aspects that are incredibly important. We all know speed to lead is, is of the utmost important. If you don't get to somebody within five minutes of them submitting their information, they're going to find some, something somewhere else. And even when you do get back to them, if they haven't found somebody else, they're not interested. They're going to find somebody else before they talk to you. You, you weren't on it. But also the speed to reply. And what I mean by that is, so for instance, what we offer is the email automation so you can get something of value to them right away. But we also offer a text automation. So we have your automated assistant text them within three minutes of them submitting their information. When they reply to that automation, that's where it's key because speed to lead, check, done, no problem. But as soon as they reply to the text automation, the automation pauses, the agent, whoever funnel it belongs to, gets notified by text of the response, the phone number involved, the name, and what they replied with. That is where the key really comes in because once again, if you let that sit for a day or two, well, how interested were you in getting my business? Obviously not that interested. So you can see something like this here. The first text would go out, hey, Sean, this is Julie. I work with Nicholas. I see you're interested in your uh, uh, list uh, upcoming listings in Alameda County. Great. Now, they've come through, and this is a buyer's funnel, obviously. They've said what they've said here. Now, you get to be Julie. You get to be the assistant. You can type in below here and respond and then continue that conversation. Hey, Sean, thanks so much for your reply. I'm going to pass your information over to Logan right now or over to, to Nicholas, whoever it belongs to. I expect him to follow up with you within the hour. Here's his number. Here's the number he's going to be calling you from. Right Now that speed to lead is done, the speed to reply is done, they're waiting for that call. On the seller side, you can do something like, uh, hey, uh, hey, Sean, thanks so much for your reply. Logan's actually showing homes in your neighborhood today. Why don't I get him to pop by and introduce himself when he wraps up for the day? Right? And the reason why that works, once again, is that you've lowered the, you've lowered the bar. You've lowered the imposition level. If somebody is, let's say, three to six months away from selling, they may not be comfortable having the agent drive across town just for them. Pressure, pressure, pressure is what they're thinking, right? But if you say, hey, the agent's already showing homes in your area today. Why don't I get him to pop by and, and you know, say hello when he wraps up? Two things happen. Oh, he has active buyers in my area. Good start. I mean, that's a cheesy line that we, none of us really should use anymore. I have, I have buyers in your area. <laughs> it's in our marketing. I'm sure it is. But this is a, a, a little drawback from that, but it still shows, hey, I'm working with buyers in your area without actually saying it. It's, you know, they're showing homes in your area today, but then also they're already in my area. Why don't I get them to pop by and introduce themselves? I'm not ready to sell yet. That's fine. But now I have an appointment. I have a reason to go talk to them. I have the ability to introduce myself personally. I'm going to get their name. I'm going to get their story. I have a reason to find them on Facebook. I'm going to put them into all my drip campaigns. You they guys, know me. You can think outside the box in this. The SMS could be firing a bomb bomb video. Okay. There's so many, many ways to do this. You could literally hire someone to take the place as Julie and fire off a bomb bomb video and she's your now assistant. And even though you're not, you're a solo team, as long as you're being authentic and genuine trying to get the information. In this, in this case, for example, if they say, hey, Julie, it's been painted on the outside, but nothing else major, 
You simply go, hey, Logan, thanks for your response. Are you interested in a quick assessment based on the internet's best value, or would you like to schedule a 20-minute walkthrough with Tristan this week? Right? So it's, it's taking the conversation over. Now, on the, on the side of, of the, you know, as we were talking, you want, you want to have automations feeling authentic and genuine. Well, think about this. Emojis built in the subject line. Request, receive your request for Facebook for the list of homes for sale, and I'm on it, personal video included. Video in there, right? He also goes in and his automations, and he goes, you know what? Thank you for requesting a list of homes for sale in the East Bay. Before I send that over to you, is there any specifics you would like to provide me that would tailor your list and ideal property to you? Because, listen, they're all going to start with wanting a list of homes for sale in the Alameda County under 799. Okay, that's easy. But what about amenities? What about bedroom and bathroom count? What about specific neighborhoods, right? What about, hey, I'd love to set up a quick five-minute phone call with you to learn more about what your needs are and answer any questions you might have. Here's a link to my schedule, 10-minute link right into their schedule. What about, here's a free guide to the East Bay buying process. What about get to know me on Facebook and Instagram? What about an email signature? You see what we're doing there? Yeah. So that's the key. If you're going to use autoresponders, use them this way. If you're going to use autoresponders, use them to connect. And then, of course, nothing's going to take the, the place of personally connecting them as, as well. But you can point everything back to Facebook as well with your autoresponders. So there's an absolute art to it. But if you think about how everything should be pointing to the relationship and uncovering what their true motivation is, that's where you're going to be successful as a Facebook lead conversion um, you know, expert, I would say. It makes sense. Uh, we weren't necessarily going to touch on this, but real quickly while we're talking about buyers, um, a lot of people want to try to keep um, that list really small and assume that we know what our clients are going to want, right? What I like to do is go the other way with it. I call it white knighting it. I, I like to swoop in and save people, right? So what I like to do is I'll offer a list, say, you know, homes in Kelowna under $800,000. I know that right now there's probably 85 to 100 of those homes. Now it's like giving a toddler dinner. Right? Do you ask them what, what they want or do you give them 20 options? Of course not. You tell them what's for dinner. Right? So I take the uh, counterintuitive approach on this one though where I like to say, okay, here's that list. You know, you've asked for the list. I'm going to give you the complete list. Then I can tell you know, through my MLS, my matrix, when they've logged in and started looking at that list. As soon as they do, the, the, as quick to when I see that they've started perusing that list, I reach out to them and I say, Hey, so I see that you've started looking at that list I've, I've, I've put together for you. I just had to look through it myself and I realized it's quite overwhelming. What I'd like to do is cut this down. I'd like to, to, to eliminate all the noise for you in order to do so. I need to know truly what you're looking for because now you've sent them the list as per their, their request. But now, once again, you're coming to their aid. You're their realtor, right? I've sent you the list. There's 80 homes. I'm sure most of these don't fit what you're actually looking for. Why don't we do this? Why don't we meet for a quick coffee? You can tell me exactly what you want. I have a checklist for you to fill in. Tell me exactly what you're looking for. Done deal. I, now I meet them. Once again, I build rapport. And the next list they get from me is going to have three homes on it, right? The I, lo I, love the key, I love the key there, whereas you want to meet them in person. Always. Because that, uh, according to the stats that we were reading for NAR, it increases your chances dramatically when you meet somebody in person. 78% of the people that come through online, if you meet them in person, they end up using you. Well, 100%, and it starts here as well. I, I don't know what the stats are necessarily, but I'd be very interested to know what they are, is the likelihood of you getting that in-person um, appointment booked starts with that, the video conversation. Well, dude, right? I, I, mean, think, I, I think that comes, that, that really, that's so hard to measure because it depends on the proficiency of the agent yep. and whether or not they have the processes in place that you're talking about, right? The video, the back and forth text, the quickness. Um, but Donna has a question about what you were talking about previous to this spot. Certainly. Yeah. Uh, sure. Donna Tidwell is asking, what if you don't have a landing page or a funnel, where do you direct them when they click on the ad? Well, that's a good question. I mean, it, ultimately the, uh, we might not have the best answer for that based on the fact that the entire system that we offer, that is what it is. It offers the landing page and everything like that. I think that's what you need that if you don't have a landing page, the best answer I can get you is that you need one. Um, where are you directing them? That's a good question. I mean, maybe back to your website, but I mean, what are they going to find there? More business, personally, business, business. Personally, I'm, I'm, I'm directing them. Personally, I'm directing them to Facebook messenger yep. and I'm sending them this message that you see right here. Because if I, 
where can things get lost in translations? Any time that you allow HTML to speak on behalf of you, even if you drop an email signature with your face, what if you come across with some, like, so I get it, people are apprehensive and scared about video, but that's the only way they can be authentic outside of showing up at their home, which is very uncomfortable for a lot, a lot of people. So if you're not willing to do that, then you better embrace video as the next wave of communication and everything is moving. I mean, we're doing video right now. Everything is moving this way. Facebook is free. If you're going to be doing Facebook lead generation, then you have to, to embrace that the video side of things is only going to become bigger. And it's those who adapt it now are going to win every time. And that's why BombBomb is the biggest email communication tool out there available. There's nothing like it. If you're not comfortable with video, you need to get comfortable with video. I hate seeing myself on camera. I've never liked being part of, of the webinars and everything like that. I used to get dragged into these things kicking and screaming, and now I'm the one who's trying to do them more often because mm -hmm. I've noticed the same thing on my own business is I used to have phone conversations with all my clients and trying to get – the information I provide people is the exact same, but now that I, I have the Zoom software and I can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and I can send people videos, they now get a, a glimpse into me and my personality, and it's much easier to establish rapport they trust me more because they can see me you guys, donna yeah. donna's got a, an, another question as part of your answer uh, how do you direct them to messenger where do you get the link so i i think that would be something that steven would be more proficient answering but I, i'm guessing it's an ads done through lead through lead ads on facebook side that can direct into it, it is yeah it's, a, it's an option it's um, an option what happens is instead of instead of saying, well, uh, here's the website or here's the landing page or whatever you've got, the option is just send them to Messenger. Um, that's that's the option. That's what you would do. But that's if you want to create it on your own. Really, what I would do and what we do now, what Nick and I do now, is we try to leverage as much of this as possible. And that's where a company like Street Text comes in, and because they're running so many different ads we're able to just give them the funds and they're able to produce amazing things for us. Uh, I think that's really, that's, that's where the lifesaver is for us, man. Cool. The funny thing, is, you know, agents are weird, right? Like agents, <laughs> they're just weird in the sense that like, they'll tell you all day long, you know, don't, use don't take your own uh photographs at your listing because you're not a photographer you're an agent or don't you know give staging advice because you're not an interior designer you're an agent but then all day long they're like just create your own ads you don't need to hire someone for that <laughs> it's like, yes you do because you can waste why why try to figure it out when someone's already done it right you're gonna spend so much more money trying to figure out what works when you could spend the money on you already on knowing what already does work. It's just, it's such a, such a weird, like uh, just a weird like mentality that some of them have, you know, does it well, make sense? And if you, if you have your own content and your own ads that you want to create, but you're missing the landing page, I think that's the other side that we have to offer is that with our ads come landing pages. So once you come in and create an ad, you get a link, you get a URL to your landing page. So even if you wanted to go, uh, you know, off topic or, or, you know, off site, so to speak, and build your own ad, you could then connect it with the URL that street text has provided. So once people click on it, they still get to a street text landing page where those, I wouldn't um, suggest leads it. Are generated. It, I wouldn't, it works, but it, you, you want to stick to, to our ads. Yeah. There's, there's, the there's a natural congruency from the ad itself into the landing pages, which gives us that high click to contact ratio. But listen, we are the type of company that says, come on, try us for free. I mean, right now we're giving you this special offer, which is the course that we usually give away for people that actually sign up with us. That's yours. All you have to do is come try street text. And here's the thing, our trial is free and you don't really have to go out there and spend ads. Now it'd be wise to spend some money behind those ads so you can see how our phones work, but we're going to show you exactly everything we talked about today from running macro and micro ads specifically on tying them into your automations, how to use integrations. Let's say you have line desk. Let's say you have follow-up boss. Let's say you have all these other systems you're already using that you want to tie into street text. We, all, we have that all covered for you. We're going to help you with your email signatures. We're going to help you with embedding videos. We're going to help you with scripts. We've got masterminds. We've got a whole training module. But at the end of the day, really the only thing that separates anybody from being successful is time blocking for it and then being willing to, willing to learn and devote themselves to that process that we're, we're teaching. You know, it's funny today. I was helping one of my agents create a Facebook uh, ad like through mess through Facebook ads manager. And I'm like, uh, 
Like I haven't done it myself through ads manager so long because I have like, I leverage products that literally I click three buttons and uh, <laughs> I do it right. But I'm like, oh, I think, I mean, I figured it out, but it was excruciating. <laughs> You know what well, I mean? Because you, honestly, you have to do what you guys do. Like that's your job is to keep up with that stuff, right? So then Tristan and I and agents like us can just go on and click a few buttons and it works. You know, it's just so funny to me. Well, true, and I'll, I'll leave you with one more thing here. We're, we're kind of getting close to the end of it. And there was one other thing I really wanted to highlight for people. Obviously, we want you guys to come try the trial and, and see what it is that we do. You know, we want to prove it to you that this works. But for even if you guys are creating your own ads, one thing that I think is beneficial for everybody to understand is when it comes, uh, Marcus, take it to the, uh, the sli slide of the, um, the uh, track there. The, uh, the, the, I, like to, I like to use, once again, sports analogies and think of it this way. Oftentimes, we're looking to curate our, our own targeting so that we, build, we find the perfect client. That's not the right way to do this because Facebook's algorithm has shifted once again, and it's, it's much better at finding the right people for us automatically. And the more exclusions that you put in the way, the more hurdles you put. So I always look at it this way. You're, you're running the hundred year dash next to somebody. They have zero hurdles in front of them. Every time you say, okay, I only want people 35 years of age or older. I only want people you can't choose financial implications anymore. But when you could, you know, I want people who only make 75 K a year or more. I only want people who are this. I only want this. I want to exclude these people. You're just putting hurdles in your way. And while you will eventually get to that finish line, it's going to take you more time and time is money. So think of it this way for every hurdle you put in your way, you've heightened the cost per click. You've, you've lowered the relevancy because Facebook is now saying, okay, I have this many people. Well, I want 35 plus. Okay. Now I only want people who are potentially homeowners who this, that, and the other thing. Okay. Now you may find what you're looking for in time, but once again, that cost is much higher. So I would rather a little bit of everybody and then, and then filter it through the automations afterwards. And if you're finding, you know, 19 year olds, you can go in and see the age demographics as to who's been clicking on your ad. And if you're spending money on clicks for 19 year olds and things like that, then retroactively make those exclusions. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there's one other question that goes along with, with what you were saying again previously. Uh, Wolverine, Logan. Uh, <laughs> by the way, that was a great comment, what you said. Uh, why not just remove the hurdles? And the more hurdles you remove, the faster you'll get there. I'm actually seeing your product the same way. Why, why try to figure this whole thing out on your own? This is complicated, man. Just remove the hurdle of actually trying to build these ads and just hire you guys, or at least test it out for free. Uh, but... Well, I'm not building one ads. We're, we're building 55,000 ads. So we get to look at the, the information that's gathered amongst those, in which if I'm trying to decipher what's happening between three ads, well, I better be an expert, right? The fact that I have 55,000 ads, I just have to be okay at my job <laughs> and everybody wins. That's right? very it's true. Much better. Rod Fishkin has a question. Are your lead ads ever not approved by Facebook due to all the text in the map image or any type of ads for that matter? We've never seen that. The only time we've ever seen any of our ads disapproved are for people who have never run sponsored ads from their own ad account before and they haven't certified compliance and they have to go through and, and certify that they understand the regulations and the policy um, requirements of Facebook, that they're uh, not going to run anything that would be deemed discriminatory in nature. Um, we've, we haven't seen, especially in the, I'd say at least in this last you know eight, nine months or whatever, I haven't seen any of our ads disapproved for um, any reason other than once again, people who have to rectify something within their own ads account. Um, of course, we get people who have unsettled ad accounts, they owe money, whatever it is, then if they run anything, Facebook won't allow it, of course, because we just connected with an API. But um, no, our ads are, are designed to be fully compliant in every way, shape, or form. All right, perfect, man. I appreciate that. Great answer. Logan, anything you want to add, Captain America, Wolverine? Just come on over, try us out. I mean, we're, we're the, the type of company that says it's not a matter of if it's going to work, it's when. So it's the idea of you need more than seven days, you need 10 days, you need 14 days. Basically, we'll put everything to the test and we'll continue to run ads with you until we t dial into that ad performance that we feel is worthy. And at that moment, then it'll become more of, a, of an understanding of, is it a fit? Do you, are you willing to embrace this idea that we're teaching you on the treat every single person the same, even these address only is connect with them relationally, uncover what they're looking to accomplish both on the buyer and seller side. And if you adapt to that environment, you're going to be amazing. Like, and so we're, we're just said, come on over, test us out. 
get into our mastermind. Even tomorrow we have a mastermind. Everybody's welcome to come to it. It invites you to the entire community. That's 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Come on in and, and see how our community thrives together. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the same thing as uh, I don't know too many places um, that – want to give a seven day trial, right? I get people all the time who come and say, you know what? I've heard it works for so-and-so. Let's just go ahead. I'm going to sign up, do the three months, six months, whatever it is. And we convince everybody to do the trial because we want there to be a fit. We want to make sure everybody knows exactly what they're getting. We want to make sure that it's working properly for them in their area. Um, if it doesn't hit right off the bat, we know we're going to get it to work. Right. But on the same, same uh, token, we want people to be just as pumped as we are. Right. And, and it's, it's, it, it's fun for us dealing with, with different accounts every day, logging in and seeing the what's happened and then getting those feedback stories in our insider group of, you know, I've got X amount of listings and, and whatever, and we could repackage that for marketing, but it, more than anything, it's for, it's good for us. We hey, love here. So. We, we love working with you too. Even if you're apprehensive or scared around the video side of this, we love coming along with you, having you test it with us, giving you some honest, constructive feedback putting ourselves in the seller's shoes and the buyer's shoes. And if we feel that that video that you're using is scripted, we'll tell you and we'll give you feedback on how to make that more authentic. So it, it comes down to practicing. And over time, it's as if you were right in front of them. You always got to think of it in terms of looking into the camera's eyes, the, the webcam or your video camera and talking to that person as if you were a one-on-one, -on -one, even if it's going out to multiple leads overnight. Yeah. I love it guys. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm going to make a, a little summary Yep. Uh, on the on the webinar portion of this on the on the Facebook group, and let's see if we have any other questions. I think most of them were answered, guys. Let's see here, awesome. nailed it. I love it. All right, and then just uh, make sure you answer any other questions that pop up through the day. Uh, Logan, Marcus, uh, you're Logan. You're in the group, right? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. All right. If, perfect. Uh, then I'll, I'll I'll tag you uh, both on it. But you you have to. <laughs> You have to drop one of your friends and, and accept Logan's friend request. I, I, well, I said, try sending you a friend request. I was like, well, aw. I'll do it. I'll do it. Right popular. Now. <laughs> Thank you guys. All right. Awesome. Thank you guys. Right. Talk to you. Bye. Bye.